to, to pursue suicidal economic policy. Uh, people just, I hope that uh, your, your team can flash up a graph that Bjorn Lomborg showed me yesterday of electricity cost in the UK, energy cost in the UK versus China, US and other countries. And you can see that we are literally making ourselves poorer for ideological reasons. While, let me remind you, making absolutely no impact on climate change, given that the UK produces 2% of global carbon emissions. So we're making ourselves poorer, we're making ourselves less secure, we are making ourselves dependent on our enemies in order to achieve nothing except one thing, which is the only thing that we now seem to care about, which is feeling good about how virtuous we are. Konstantin Kiesen is absolutely right to point out the absurdity of the current climate change narrative. It has morphed into a religious ideology, and like all dogmas, it no longer welcomes debate or even common sense. What we're seeing, especially in Europe, is a series of energy policies driven more by climate hysteria than by practicality or concern for people's livelihoods. It's about time someone like Kiesen stood up and said it. There is no climate catastrophe looming. Yes, the climate is changing, but not to the apocalyptic extent we're being sold. The real catastrophe is the one Europe has created for itself by abandoning rational energy policies in favor of chasing green fantasies. We're being told that it's climate science. And when you think about science, what we're thinking about is, if I pick up this glass and let it go, we know scientifically that mm. such a thing as gravity exists and the glass will fall to the ground. The climate stuff is modeling. Now, as you say, we've seen in recent years that modeling isn't always as reliable as one might hope, to put it mildly. And that's before you have political interests that are clearly involved in it and economic interests. There are people who stand to lose from um, the pursuit of net zero. And, and you know, the, I have no doubt the coal and oil companies don't want us to pursue that and perhaps uh, will deliberately be willfully blind about the impact of their pollution and emissions. But on the other hand, we have to acknowledge that green industry people have an incentive to amplify the scale of the disaster uh, or so-called disaster. So there is a lot of politicization of something that isn't actually science in the conventional ordinary man in the street understanding of that word anyway. Uh, and so to, to, to pursue suicidal economic policy. Uh, people just, I hope that uh, your, your team can flash up a graph that Bjorn Lomborg showed me yesterday of electricity cost in the UK, energy cost in the UK versus China, US and other countries. And you can see that we are literally making ourselves poorer for ideological reasons. While, let me remind you, making absolutely no impact on climate change, given that the UK produces 2% of global carbon emissions. So we're making ourselves poorer, we're making ourselves less secure, we are making ourselves dependent on our enemies in order to achieve nothing except one thing, which is the only thing that we now seem to care about, which is feeling good about how virtuous we are. Europe is a case study in how not to run energy policy. Just look at Germany, once the industrial powerhouse of Europe, now dependent on foreign energy because they decided to shut down their nuclear power plants in the name of going green. What's the result? They're burning more coal than ever and importing energy from, wait for it, Russia. That's right, while preaching about climate change and cutting emissions, Europe has made itself dependent on authoritarian regimes for its energy supply. It's like cutting off your leg to cure a headache. And let's not forget the disastrous consequences for ordinary people. Energy prices in Europe have skyrocketed, especially during the winter. Families are being forced to choose between heating their homes or putting food on the table, all because the ruling elites are obsessed with meeting climate targets that won't make a dent in global emissions. Meanwhile, China, the biggest polluter in the world, keeps building coal plants as if the climate conferences don't exist. This isn't just stupidity, it's negligence. Europe's leaders are sacrificing their economies, their energy security, and their people's well-being on the altar of climate alarmism. The truth is, Europe is now at the mercy of foreign energy producers and that's a direct result of bad energy policies. When you shut down reliable sources like nuclear and fossil fuels without a feasible alternative in place, you don't save the planet. You cripple your economy and hand control over to nations that don't share your values. Europe's dependence on Russian gas is just one glaring example, and we've all seen the geopolitical consequences of that. The US should be paying close attention because this is exactly where we're headed if we continue down the same path. Just like Europe, we're seeing energy policies driven by ideology rather than logic. Biden's administration is all in on pushing electric cars and wind farms while vilifying oil, gas, and coal. But what happens when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine? 
The same thing that's happening in Europe. Skyrocketing prices, energy shortages, and a weakened geopolitical position. Uh, and I said this, um, this would have been, I don't remember the year, probably 2022, the first time Francis and I were on Joe Rogan's show. And I said that, and I've been saying for many, many years now, the trans issue is what will break intersectionality. It's what will break this progressive delusion. It's what will break everything. Because once people can see with their own eyes what this ideology leads to, when they see children being mutilated, when they see adults abdicating all responsibility, including in a medical setting, uh, then that would inevitably lead to a strong backlash, which we have now seen in this country. So I think that's a tremendous step forward, much more work to do, of course. And it reflects a broader public sentiment, I think, uh, the, the voice of sanity, uh, people like Helen Joyce and J.K. Rowling and all sorts of others uh, are finally being heard. Uh, that's true in the UK and many other European countries, actually. It is less true in the United States yeah, uh, yeah. for uh, reasons that we can uh, all... Well, there are many reasons, but the most obvious one, of course, is uh, we. I think you, by, by, you and I both are great admirers of capitalism, uh, but capitalism without any moral framework becomes a whole different Absolutely. entity. And so uh, if there's money to be made uh, from uh, trans surgery, then I, which there is in the United States in a way that there isn't in this country, you will always find people who, for ideological and profit reasons, will continue to do it. And I know having, this is anecdotal, but having spoken to people who are surgeons, that, you know, if if you or I needed some sort of heart surgery, the, the, the amount of money the surgeon earns is, is quite minimal, actually, a few thousand dollars at most. With trans surgery, it's a highly profitable operation. It's good to see that Europe is now waking up on the trans issue. I can only hope that the leaders will come back to their senses concerning the energy crisis as well. My guess is that something drastic is going to happen in the next few years that will awaken the leaders of Europe, hopefully before everyone is poor or the immigrants who hate the West have taken over Europe completely. The facts don't lie. Green energy alone isn't capable of powering modern economies, at least not yet. Until we have viable, scalable solutions, abandoning reliable energy sources is reckless and dangerous. If we don't wake up soon, we're going to find ourselves in the same mess Europe is in, dependent on hostile foreign powers and watching our energy bills soar. It's time to get real about climate change and energy policy. We need balanced, practical solutions that prioritize people's lives and livelihoods over ideological purity. Otherwise, we're going to destroy our economies and weaken our nations, all in the name of a false climate catastrophe.